Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we will be upgrading the memory in a 2009 Mac Mini. Make sure to watch the video all the way through before attempting this upgrade. As you will see, getting into the Mini is a very difficult procedure and professional installation is recommended. See the end of this video for more information. We have shut down and unplugged the Mini and placed it on a soft, static-free cloth to prevent scratching the surface. To get inside, we will need to flip the Mini over. To loosen the clips holding the top cover on, you will need a small putty knife which can be found in most hardware stores. Carefully insert the blade of the putty knife between the inner and outer case. Gently but firmly pry out with the knife. This will cause it to detach the inner clips from the case. You will hear a series of pops as the clips come free. Carefully work your way around the mini's edges. Once you get to the rear of the Mini, the case should be separated enough that you can simply lift the cover up and off. Inside, there are three antennas that need to be removed. The two narrow antennas on the left simply pull up and out. There is a spring under each that you should remove as well so they don't get lost. The frontmost antenna's wire is held down with tape, which you'll need to remove. The large antenna on the right has a small clip underneath, which you will need to squeeze to release. You'll want to remove this spring as well. There are four screws you will need to remove to detach the drive assembly from the base. The front left screw is located here. The rear left screw is located here. The right rear screw can be found here. The right front screw is larger than the others and can be found here. Once you have removed the screws, detach the ribbon cable that connects the two halves. Once that has been detached, you can gently lift the drive assembly up and away from the base. It may take a little maneuvering to get the assembly clear. The hard drive is located on the underside of this assembly. It is held into place by these four screws, which will need to be removed. Next, you will need to remove the temperature sensor. Use your nylon pry tool to gently pry the sensor loose from the drive, then detach the tape holding the cable to the drive bottom. Push the drive forward within its bay to loosen it from the SATA connector. Then, use your pry tool to help lift it up and out of the assembly. There are two anti-static cushions on the drive which will need to be removed. Gently peel them off and set them aside. You are now ready to install the new drive. Place the two anti-static cushions you removed from the old drive onto the same locations on the new one. There should be enough residual adhesive on the pads to hold them on. Slide the drive back into its compartment, 
Then, tipping the assembly so that the drive is on the underside, slide the drive back onto the SATA connector. Next, replace the four mounting screws. You may now reattach the heat sensor. Again, there should be enough adhesive left on the sensor to attach it to the drive. Replace the drive assembly, making sure not to pinch any of the antenna wires. You may need to adjust the positioning a little bit until the assembly fits into place. Next, reattach the drive ribbon cable. It is now time to replace the four corner screws. The large screw goes in the right front position. The three remaining screws are all the same size and go in the three remaining corners. Place the springs on the antenna posts. Then, attach the antennas themselves by pushing them into place. It's 2.30. For the large antenna on the right, you may need to squeeze the clip you used to remove it in order to replace it. Once that's done, you may now replace the top cover. Push down evenly around all edges until it clips flush back into place.